Today's reading comes from Matthew's Gospel. It's chapter 20, and it's entitled, The Workers in the Vineyard. The kingdom of heaven is like this. Once there was a man who went out early in the morning to hire some men to work in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them the regular wage, a silver coin a day, and he sent them to work in his vineyard. He went out again to the marketplace at nine o'clock and saw some men standing there doing nothing. So he told them, you also go and work in the vineyard and I'll pay you a fair wage. So they went. Then at twelve o'clock and again at three o'clock, he did the same thing. It was nearly five o'clock when he went to the marketplace and saw some other men still standing there. Why are you wasting the whole day here doing nothing, he asked them. No one hired us, they answered. Well then, you also go and work in the vineyard, he told them. When evening came, the owner told his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, starting with those who were hired last and ending with those who were hired first. The men who had begun to work at five o'clock were paid a silver coin each. So when the men who were first to be hired came to be paid, they thought that they would get more. But they too were given a silver coin each. They took their money and started grumbling against the employer. These men were hired last, worked only one hour, they said, while we put up with a whole day's work in the hot sun, yet you paid them the same as you paid us. Listen, friend, the owner answered one of them. I have not cheated you. After all, you agreed to do a day's work for one silver coin. Now take your pay and go home. I want to give this man who was hired last as much as I have given you. Don't I have the right to do as I wish with my own money? Or are you jealous because I am generous? And Jesus concluded, so those who are last will be first and those who are first will be last. The parable comes immediately after Jesus' dialogue with someone referred to as the rich young man. And Jesus says to that young person, If you want to be perfect, go and sell all you have and give the money to the poor, and you will have riches in heaven. Then come and follow me. If you want to be perfect, go and sell all you have and give your money to the poor. The two stand together as examples of how people who belong to the kingdom of heaven here on earth should behave, where their priorities should lie. Many commentators agree that the use of that final verse, those who are last will be first and those who are first will be last, is a clumsy construct that doesn't really seem to fit with the parable of the workers in the vineyard, that it's all part of something bigger than the first and the last. I mean, it's true that the workers are hired in an order, they're paid in an order, but the real point of the parable is twofold and is revealed in chapter, sorry, in verse 15. God's grace, God's infinite love, and by definition, nothing can be bigger than infinite, is the same for all people everywhere, anytime. It doesn't matter if you've received God's grace into your heart 50 years ago, or if you've heard it today. You're equally as blessed and equally as loved. And the second part, of course, is to do with our own attitude and our own sense of self, which is exactly the problem for the rich young man. Jesus says to him, You need to let go of all those things that you treasure because actually they're not your treasure. This doesn't mean there's anything wrong with those things, but what it does mean is making them your priority. Remember the words of the great commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your spirit and love your neighbour as yourself. It means nothing trumps God in terms of importance, in terms of value. Lovely things that we may own and acquire, that we may take great pleasure in, 
are all super. They're all grace. They're all part of God's creation. But they can never, ever take supremacy over us. If we find for a moment, like the rich young man, that the possibility of having to give them up is something that we would find unbearable, then we've clearly invested too much in the things of this world. Things which are simply material, things which are transient, things which we may feel we own, but which could be stolen from us or sold by somebody else to another person and suddenly not ours. They're fleeting. It's great to enjoy things. We need to be joyful people and derive endless happiness, laughter and joy from the things of this world and the things that brothers and sisters have created in this world through the gifts and talents that God has given them. But they are just things, all of them, just things. Enjoy them, live in the moment, be there and be happy with them, but be prepared to let anything go because ultimately our strength, our assurance comes from God's love and that love is given universally. In our churches sometimes we often celebrate the length of time that somebody has served in a particular role. Within the Methodist Church for local preachers we award long service certificates to preachers every 25, then it goes down to maybe every 10 years. <sighs> And on the one hand, it's good, of course, to celebrate and to say thank you for service given. Of course, it starts to get immediately unfair if not everybody is celebrated in that way. Uh, what about the person who has cleaned the church for 50 years? Or the person who's been on the flower rotor for 50 years? Or the person who has faithfully turned up and opened the door and greeted people with a smile for decades? We need to celebrate everyone equally. We need to thank everyone the same. And if you've been involved with a church, which is, remember, a human construct, a human reflection of what we hope would do God glory for a long time, one should be as delighted with a new person who walks in through the door as that person who's been coming for decades. All are loved. All are valued. And we can never be people who adhere to the transient things of this world to find our value and our meaning, whether that's the things we own, like the rich young man, or maybe the titles that we possess, or the long service that we have given, that we wear with pride on our sleeves. All of us are children before God, because we were made by God. And that's not to demean anybody. In fact, it's to elevate everybody because all are valued, all are loved.